Hi everyone, CG Seb here, and welcome to part two of this Fluent 2.0 course. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, uh, go check it out and come back to this video. Uh, the link is in the description. Let's start by adding some details to the site. Uh, when you show the grid on a mirror object, you can press X and right click again on the face you are working on. Make a single rectangle cut with a bevel and use the linear array. You can also press A. Click on the direction you want and move your mouse to the right to increase the space between the two elements. Once you are happy, press C to change the number of elements. Press C again if you want to adjust the size. After you're done with the array, left click to validate and click on the check button. You can mirror it to every side. This door looks a bit too simple. I use the cut tool and click on face inset at the bottom. Select this face and press I. Make some space like this and press enter. If you move your mouse a bit to the left, you will go inside the door. Like we did with the cut into the other door, shift click on the pencil icon. Use the shape tool and make a diagonal like this. Press space to make a path. You can have an artifact like this and we will fix it later. Mirror this path to the bottom and this time do a simple click on the pencil icon to keep cutting the current object. I let you adjust the thickness as you want and right click once you're done. Show the boolean object and go to edit mode. Select this vertex and move it by pressing G and shift Y to move it only on X and Z. We still have an issue, but this time this is because of the support edges. As usual, go to edit mode. You can go to the Modifiers and click on this icon on every modifiers so you can see better what you're doing in edit mode. Press Ctrl R and add an edge. Make sure the edge you added is not creating issues on the top. Sometimes reducing the bevel can fix issues like this, but here it doesn't. Here the issue was that the first edge I added was not aligned correctly. With complex shape like this, uh, you need to move the support edges uh, to find the perfect spot. Here is a fine touch you can add to make your edges less boring. Use the cut tool and show the grid. You will see some blue dots in the corners. Use the Align tool by pressing A. Click on the first dot and then on the second one. Now the middle of the grid is aligned with the edge. Use the Rotate tool to rotate by 45 degrees. You can now make a simple cut and add an array to it by pressing A. Better, right? I would like to add an inset on this window. We will use the cut to cutter technique. Show the boolean by clicking on greater than lower than key and select 
this boolean. Use the inset tool and show the grid on the side. Drag a rectangle from the middle by holding shift. You can adjust the thickness as you want. We got an issue here. Let's show the wireframe to see what is happening. The support edge we added at the bottom part is causing it. Uh, I will simply move the window a bit. It's time for the maintenance door now. Use the slice tool and show the grid. Press X and right click again to show only on this face. Use the circle tool and draw in the middle top. The circle resolution is changing based on its size, but you can change it manually after. With the arrays, paste them on the side. You can change the resolution in the Fluent tool. Notice that you need to press V, so the resolution will stay the same and not auto-adjust. Add a cut at the bottom of the door and mirror it. I'll show you a cool trick you can use to make a vent. We can start with a slice for the outer part. Don't forget to press V when you adjust the resolution. Validate the shape with right click. Select the slice and use the cut. Click on Revolver tool. You need then to right click in the middle. This will rotate the grid. Go to top view to make it easier. The Revolver tool uh, will rotate the shape you are drawing around the axis perpendicular to the face. Always start from the middle point and end on a middle point. Once you're done, press space to validate. I will edit it because I don't really like how it is. Show the boolean, select this one. Go to edit mode. You will notice that this is not a mesh, but just a line. Move the vertex to get what you want. Now I will use the cut tool with the circle shape to make a hole. I will reuse this cutter we just did. Show the boolean, select it, and go to the Fluent menu. If you shift click on this icon, it will extract the boolean and create a separate object with it. You can move it a bit inside and use the cut tool. We are going to make a cut in the middle, uh, make it very small. Now rotate the cut by 45 degrees and use the array tool. Since it's already a mirrored object, you don't need to mirror the cut. If you add a bevel, you will have to make it very small to avoid the overlapping issues. There is one tool that I use a lot, and this is the circular array. Make a simple cut, and in the Flint tools, select circular array. Press C to 
rotate the shape. If you hold click, you will see some options that will allow you to change the different aspects of it. For the handle base, I will reuse the same technique we did for the vent. Start with a slice and add a revolver to the slice. This time I will pull out the boolean extraction and add a bevel to it. Some people will tell me that you can do the same with a slice, but in reality you can't easily put it out like this. For the handle itself, just use a cube. Notice that if you scale the cube in object mode with S, uh, you need to apply the scale with Ctrl A so the bevel shows properly along the object. Another cool thing you can do with the shape tool is making a pass with spacebar once you're done with the drawing. You can add a bevel and a mirror to it so it is symmetrical. All right, that was it for the basic usage of Fluent. I hope you enjoyed this course. If you don't know what Fluent Materializer is, I really recommend you watching this next. See you on the next one.